Pilar Conecter. Daniel, yes, Daniel. Okay. Hi, Silvio. Hi, you hear me? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Uh, is everything okay? You can share your presentation? Yes. yes, yes. You see my screen? Yes, I can see it. Okay. I'm okay. Well, okay. Uh, thank you, Silvio. Thank you for accepting uh, our invitation to give this talk. It's a really pleasure for me to introduce uh, Professor Circulescu. Uh, I will give some short uh, bio of uh, Professor Niculescu. Uh, he received the bachelor's degree from the Polytechnic Institute of Bucharest in Romania, the Master of Science and PhD degree from the Institut National Polytechnique de Grenoble in France, and the French habilitation from the Université de Technologie de Compiègne, all this in automatic control. He is current research director at CN CNRS at El Duces, uh, Laboratoire de Signal Systems, Second sign, French, I think. More or less, more or less. <laughs> more or less, more or less. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, he's uh, an author and co-author of 11 books and more than 600 scientific papers. His research interests include delay system, robust control, operator theory, and numerical methods and optimization, optimization and the whole uh, application of these topics. Uh, since 2017, he is the chair of the IFAC TC linear control system. He has served as associate editor in several journals, including the IEEE Transaction Automatic Control. Uh, he has the IEEE Fellow, Dr. Norris Causa from the University of Cabeovia. He's a founding editor and editor in chief of the Springer Nature series Advanced in Delays. And dynamics. Um, he has several awards: the CNRS Silver and Bronze Mod Medals for uh, for scientific research. Um, okay, Silvio, thank you, thank you for accepting. Um, please go ahead with your talk. Thank you for inviting me, and I hope that you hear me properly. I'm using my, my cell phone for, for the connection because for some reason it seems that this is the only way there are some, uh, let's say, problems in terms of agreement between the teams, uh, uh, investor version of teams, uh, something version. So, anyway, so, so delay is a control parameter okay, because this is a time for my talk. So, um, uh, Daniel introduced myself. So, if we try to translate my name in, in, uh, in, in English, because it's a Latin name, it means forest. Julian, I think there is a, 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 in a Spanish version. And Nicolesco simply means the family of Nicolas, which is Nicholson. So Forrest Julian Nicholson is my name in English. So, OK, let's go ahead about, about uh, let's say, uh, this presentation. So after a short introduction, which is more or less related to the a little bit where delay appears and why delay is important, I will give some, let's say, it's a guided tour. I will give some ideas about parameters, delay dynamics, and we'll end with delay as a control parameter, which is the main topic of the, for, for the day, at least for my lecture. So, of course, not because I'm working in delay area, but everything in nature is distributed with respect to time and, uh, and space, but there are some particular processes in general. We are talking about propagation, transportation, transport systems. Delay appears. Why? Because, uh, in fact, uh, the dynamical behavior uh, includes some heterogeneity of the temporal phenomena. This is quite important because, uh, in general, delay is always associated with temporal phenomena, one point of view, and with irreversible processes. In general, if, uh, if uh, the process uh, cannot be reversed, uh, it's more than probably that the delay is a part of the game. Now, <clears throat> In terms of history, because uh, in, in order to prepare this talk, I was just thinking 
when uh, the delay story really started, it's a little bit more complicated in the sense that, um, and uh, of course, uh, we can always find arguments by saying delay is there or delay was there or delay can be interpreted in this in a particular context. But in fact, the first time when delay appeared was in the vibrating in string problem. Uh, you have several uh, dates uh, in terms of, let's say, who marked more or less the period starting from the 18th century. And what is important, I, I will not cite all of them, I will just focus on Bernoulli, Bernoulli work, yeah, I'm talking about uh, Johannes Bernoulli, uh, John, if you, uh, or Jean, uh, if we uh, use the English or the French version. Uh, why? Because Bernoulli introduced a new research angle, and this is the reason for which I, uh, I was thinking it is important to mention him. So, in fact, uh, his uh, contribution is written in Latin, and then Norman Latin was used for all scientific contribution. It's uh, Meditationes of Cordis Vibrantibus, and in fact, the title has more, more or less 28 words, but uh, for some reason we have to stop on the main, um, main words. So uh, Bernoulli was interested to find the fundamental mode for an in infinite uh, a limit of lump masses on, a, on an elastic string. And what it was, uh, his interesting idea was that <clears throat> he tried to more or less to see the problem into a different way. He was he knew at that moment how to integrate a second order differential equation and second order ordinary differential equation. And uh, he, uh, instead of um, trying to work out in, uh, let's say, in an infinite dimensional setting, he was just approximating the infinite dimensional setting by using a finite strings with equal point masses equidistant from each other. So it's quite interesting why, because if we try to translate this in our words, in fact, what Bernoulli has done was mixing from one point of view discrete and from the other point of view continuous dynamics. And uh, at this stage, what is quite interesting is that we have that function uh, that depends on some continuous argument contains of the derivative, uh, contains a derivative with respect to one of the arguments only. So in fact, we'll have, <coughs> you'll have more or less mix between T and X, X being space and T being time. And you have, uh, uh, for some reason, you have a combination of these. So I've used the definition uh, introduced by Mishkis in 2005 uh, which is more or less mixed functional differential equation on the word of mix. I will come uh, a little later. And the other, the, this was the first point, mixing discrete and the uh, continuous dynamics. The second point was that in fact he tried to re, uh, it's the first time when somebody was reasoning in terms of interconnected or more or less coupling system. Why? Because when you talk about uh, equidistant or let's say lump mass, masses which are, uh, which are, uh, are connected, uh, previous one being located at the same distance as with respect to the next one. So uh, you have a real interconnection between systems. And the last the last point is that it's a particular interconnection. Uh, you do not have, have more or less a, a chain and you are, he was exploiting the structure of the interconnection by creating the analogy with mechanical system. So I think that it's, this is quite interesting in terms of uh, why Bernoulli's uh, contribution, I found it is interesting from my point of view. And from the other point of view, <clears throat> uh, his, uh, his uh, idea was more or less, his ideas were more or less rediscovered at least a thousand times after <laughs> during the, 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 the same, uh, at least the last century in, the, in this. Now we are going to Boltzmann and the so-called Nachwirkung. Nachwirkung means simply after working. So, in in, in an elastic after working. In fact, uh, he was interested Boltzmann about the capacity of a material after being deformed to be back at its original, or let's say, at the original state position. The notion of state in, in this case will be a little bit, let's say, geometric state if one or more or less formally. So. Uh, in fact, uh, Boltzmann is in a series, started with Ebert, Koch, Schauch, and Boltzmann being the last one in the series. <clears throat> and for him, the, the notion uh, uh, of after effect was, uh, without introducing any kind of uh, differential equation to describe the phenomenon, was uh, always in the, in the context of hysteresis. So after effect appears in the context of hysteresis. But uh, he mentioned about some irreversible phenomena and the, the fact of uh, 
neuroplasticity because uh, his research was more or less in the elasticity area. And the, this uh, idea of irreversibility, in fact, is really strongly related to the layers I mentioned, I mentioned earlier. And uh, why he is important? Uh, he is important uh, because after him, uh, he <coughs> There are a lot, lot of guys who worked on, and in principle, the, the work of Volterra with Lotka. Uh, Volt, Volterra coming from elasticity, Lotka coming from the population dynamics. They are at the origin of the first developments in the state space, which you lay a few years in the context of uh, population dynamics. And now let's stay with the French story, and not because I'm working in France, but because it is quite interesting. In the sense that uh, uh, in 80, at, the, at the beginning of the 19th century, in fact, uh, his work uh, goes back to 1799, but uh, the, it was published in I03 uh, for the, uh, in the 19th century. He introduced the, the notion of uh, mixed differences, difference melee in French. And in fact, uh, I'm the, the, the notion, not necessarily the notion, the wording, because in fact the notion uh, uh, appeared earlier in, in the work of Laplace, when he tried to integrate and to represent uh, some particular, uh, let's say, uh, he tried to have solutions for uh, that, for differential equations of a particular type, which are close to the delay differential equations, but not really delay differential. What is nice is that Lemire was the first one in uh, first one saying after Bio and Poisson in a, uh, in the first decade of the 19th century. Uh, who used uh, frequency domain, but he was interested in real solution. You have the title of the of the primary paper uh, published in a uh, few uh, years at the, uh, before the end of the 19th century, which is uh, which concerns some transcendental equation, and he was interested in how real roots of this transcendental equation. And in fact, these transcendental equations are nothing else that um, more or less uh, represent. Uh, a generalization of the Lambert functions. Lambert function, he was not aware about the contribution of Lambert in this period. And he tried to integrate in, uh, one equation of, of this type of mixed differences. And in fact, what is interesting is that we try to see this in, in our, let's say, by using our language, uh, let's say, control language, he was interested on a chain of integrators subject to a delay in, uh, in the input. In fact, we have one, one delay block uh, he, he was working on. Now, and I will stop in terms of history with, uh, uh, with uh, Hale. Uh, he, Hale was mentioning in his, um, let's say, book chapter, History of Delay Equations, a result I have left to the French version of, uh, let's say, of the paragraph Hale, uh, in Hale's chapter, in, uh, uh, in which he mentioned once again that the Heredity, we need to take into account functional equations. So this uh, heredity and the functional equations are written in red. And in fact, it's still related to the fact that, at least in biology, uh, we do not have reversibility of the phenomena, which simply means that by using approximation, of, even if uh, there are nonlinear approximations, the ordinary differential equation type is not such approximations, such approxim approximations are not necessarily representing quite well the corresponding dynamics, perhaps locally in some particular. Now, if we arrive uh, to the control, and this is uh, the, mainly the, the main pro, the main topics of, the, of my talk, is that, uh, in fact, um, delay in terms of, uh, let's say, in control appeared first as a thermometric lag in 1913, and there are a lot of controlling quantities, including temperature. And in general, the notion of lag or time delay was associated with the propagation of something. Uh, uh, it should be in some, let's say, some particular media or medium of uh, some, uh, let's say, it should be propagation of the temperature. Surprisingly, in uh, the theory of several mechanism uh, pointed in 1934, pointed explicitly out. Uh, the the fact that time lag is a real problem, and in fact, Hazen in uh, in, the, in his uh, paper published in Journal of Franklin Institute, he mentions that there are two problems when we are controlling, uh, let's say, a dynamical system. One of them is represented by the oscillation, but the other one is represented by time delay. 
surprisingly, uh, Hazen was more interested, first of all, to classify all the situations in which the time lag appears, and in fact, sometimes they appear, so you have velocity time lag, acceleration time lag, and so on. And uh, one of the first, uh, let's say, method that he uh, was interested to, to suggest to the readers to go ahead with was just to use uh, more or less a precompensation to compensate the delay in uh, time in, uh, the time delay in, dyna in a dynamical system. Uh, so in other words, first the story of delay, let's say, in control started in a, in a negative way by simply saying that the delay is not necessarily a good thing. Let's take it out. <laughs> Let's take it out. So um, Bateman, in uh, writing an excellent paper in mathematics, control of an elastic fluid in the 50s, he mentioned that, in fact, handling time delays, if we take a look back to the literature, uh, let's say 20th century before the 50s and uh, more or less 19th century and even earlier, there are more or less three different approaches that can be found. The first one is a Taylor approximation, and in fact, it was Minorsky developed the theory for the, partial, uh, the proportional integral uh, derivative uh, PID control. And the Minorsky simply said that if we have a transport delay, in general, the transport delay is not necessarily huge at the moment, we can just simply ignore it by approximating the, let's say, the, the, um, uh, the dynamics uh, by using ordinary differentiation. And surprisingly, the differential dif difference equation or delay differential equations, the way we are calling them now, uh, the first result comes from economics and not from, uh, from mathematics or for, from, from control. In fact, uh, uh, the guys in economics have been interested by some particular models representing the business cycle, and there are some of them are cited there, and the first result appeared in 33. And in 35, the first study of the scalar delay differential equation was proposed in frequency uh, domain in one of the journals related to some conference. This paper was presented in 33, and the paper was published in 33. So the idea uh, for, for the analysis is just to have a right uh, dynamic uh, delay differential equation representation, and next to just trying to find solutions of being of external. Now, parameter-based approaches, and these are more or less, uh, more or less, um, some of them be found in, in control area. The first result was uh, in, uh, in, in engineering, uh, in, in engineering uh, appeared in, in engineer more or less uh, forward in uh, some of the was a paper in '37 in which uh, the editor simply mentioned that the delay, the delay. Uh, <coughs> Uh, the delay may may be in some sense uh, useful in some particular configuration in some particular cases. And now, what is surprising is that the first stability charge in the parameter space, uh, explicit computation, comes now from control, comes from chemical engineering, found you are three and Porter, uh, uh, have regarded in particular second order uh, uh, delay differential equations, uh, those representation and uh, frequency. Uh, frequency domain, and uh, define more or less uh, the stability charts uh, by taking a look to the parameter space, by choosing more or less control parameter ones uh, for with respect to which the, the stability regions have been. So, surprisingly, uh, in, in the paper of 36, what is interesting is we you have explicitly, and in fact, we have explicitly, explicitly a, Let's say a, a, a double a double integrator, which is I uh, using a delay term in a, in a proportional integral derivative way. I found this uh, as being extremely interesting. Uh, as you mentioned. Now, <clears throat> if we are talking about exponential stability, we have some let's say uh, dichotomy in the sense that. Um, Small delays and large delays, in general, we are expecting that for small delays, the stability is guaranteed, and for large delays, the stability always uh, uh, takes place, which is, in general, the case. But uh, we can have also a situation in which, for small delays, the system becomes larger delay becomes, uh, becomes stable. The idea is that at that moment, we can use the delay as a real control parameter in order to improve uh, the behavior of but we have to pay attention to the fact that the 
be like Joe's infinity, we are uh, always uh, going to stability. So we need to have uh, perhaps large delay, taking into account that small delay is destabilizing, but not too large, because if it is too large, we are always arriving in instability. And we have other type of problems that uh, the delay ratio sensitivity uh, and the interference the delay ratio sensitivity means that uh, we can be stable on a particular delay ratio, which is we have two delays. For instance, if the delays are equal to each other at the moment, we can have stability for the whole ray. But if, if we are perturbing the ratio between the delays, instead of having one, we'll have one plus epsilon, uh, we, we are losing such uh, stability of the whole ray. And we can have also interference, for instance, uh, the system is unstable if we take uh, two individual delays, but if we are coupling them, so the tau one, tau two, and tau one plus tau two, uh, we can we can get stability. So in other words, multiple delays may reinforce stability. This is philosophically speaking makes sense. Why? Because if we take into account the trajectory of the system and we take past values of the trajectory, of course, uh, taking uh, by by paying attention to delay which are used for uh, for let's say for <coughs> for exploiting these, these past values probably that the particular form of trajectory will be sufficient in order to uh, let's say to control or to define in an appropriate way the particular form of the trajectory and we have other uh, other uh, phenomena in the sense that with the so-called unstable real root locking this appears, for instance, if the delay is in, in case of a delay difference approximation of the derivative. So we have uh, I dot is nothing else than I of t minus I of t minus H, uh, everything divided by H. And in this particular case, we are getting some, <coughs> let's say, quasi polynomials if we are using the approximate uh, in frequency chain. And uh, this quasi polynomials will have coefficients depending on the parameter, and we may have uh, some unexpected or uh, behavior which is exactly the fact that we can have a real uh, root on uh, positive real roots and uh, these real roots cannot uh, can, uh, there are locked so we cannot change uh, cannot uh, take them out from the from uh, from the positive real axis the last one which is the so-called multiplicity induced dominancy mid and we have the unexpected dominancy uh, induced by the multiplicity this is a very strange and interesting phenomenon, which is your first uh, uh, saying. Uh, I will try to give some uh, some hints in this talk. <clears throat> but what is the idea? The idea is that uh, what is essential, uh, first point, which is essential, is that for a quasi-polynomial, we can define the so-called degree of the quasi-polynomial. What is exactly the degree of the quasi-polynomial? It's uh, nothing else than um, saying that the, the was introduced uh, in literature by Bielonsky a uh, few years ago, more than 20 years ago, not in the context of, uh, let's say, of delay difference equations, but in the context of uh, uh, family of uh, exponential polynomials. What is the idea? The idea is that uh, uh, it's nothing else. Uh, is given by number of, in fact, have a very simple quasi polynomial uh, including only one delay the degree of the polynomial free of the array plus the degree of the polynomial uh, corresponding to the delay value uh, plus two minus one plus two why because uh, uh, polynomial free of delay can be seen as a we take a look as a family of uh, exponential uh, polynomials uh, it corresponds to the exponent equal to zero so uh, Long story short, the degree of quasi polynomials extend the notion of the degree of a polynomial, quasi polynomials, and uh, uh, we know that quasi polynomials are infinidimensional uh, and fundamental. Uh, they have an infinite number of uh, parameters. But what is surprising is that, in fact, the degree of quasi polynomials is nothing else than the maximum multiplicity that a root may have, which is naturally related to the coefficients of the polynomial including of course the delay so this idea opens a very interesting uh, let's say uh, um, research direction in the sense by taking a look at the multiplicity of course if we arrive to the uh, to saturating the multiplicity 
if you want transmitted this as a quasi polling gas that the generate multiplicity is for a characteristic root, what's happening with the other roots? I'll have a few examples, a few examples showing that in fact all the other roots are located to the left. And uh, in other words, uh, located to the left with respect to this uh, multiple root. In other words, this multiple root setting the maximal multiplicity, which is not in gas at the degree of the quasi polynomial, is uh, more or less is more or less dominating the other. So there is no equivalent of this property in a finite dimension. Why? Because uh, once you have the maximal multiplicity in finite dimension, um, once you are um, if you are in finite dimension, the maximal multiplicity means there are no other roots. All all the roots being located at the maximum, let's say, maximum uh, maximum multiplicity value. So uh, and uh, this property opens also an interesting, uh, an interesting perspective if we talk about, uh, let's say, um, about um, about the pole location. Why? Because pole placement is a very, it's a standard uh, control, uh, let's say, uh, control approach, control method, uh, control, let's say, diameter system in finite dimension. And in this particular case, uh, it is, uh, is uh, if the most recently induced uh, dominancy holds, it is sufficient only to uh, guarantee a pole placement for, for let's say, with a, for, for a given value with the multiplicity given by uh, the, uh, let's say, the generic, uh, um, the generic multiplicity, or if not, people in order to have that uh, all the other roots for the corresponding closed loss system, characteristic roots are located in, in, in C minus. So, of course, uh, Important feature in this particular case, and I'm, I'm stopping on this, is that we are talking about multiplicity with dominancy. In fact, multiplicity is always larger than uh, the so called uh, multiplicity in the case of really equal to zero, which is nothing else corresponding to the polynomials, uh, which, uh, which, are, uh, we, which are generated by taking the field. So now, Methods, if we see the delay as the parameter, I'm trying just to have a kind of, let's say, a counterpart of uh, the, the results presented by Beck Beckman in uh, 50s concerning, let's say, uh, the control of a fluid, uh, control of, a <coughs> sorry, uh, control of an elastic fluid. So in fact, consider many, we have Newton diagram and Fisher series, and you can use the Use, uh, the, you can use the Lash's preparation theorem and Felicia's as the algorithm. In fact, it's more or less Lash's Malgrange uh, preparation theorem because we are talking about uh, say analytic, analytic functions. You can have also frequency swearing words and imaginary characteristic roots in the sense that you can reformulate um, more or less the problem of the multiplicity because this is the real problem when you have delays. Uh, a large spectrum uh, multiple roots that do not appear. So we are just reformulating the problem of multiple terms of uh, interact inter intersection between uh, uh, between curves, and we can get of properties that we have curves and uh, the multiplicity induced dominancy. And in fact, what is happening in this particular case is uh, we can we can show the dominancy by using confluence hypergeometric function, which are uh, Kammer or Wittek. So, uh, revisiting the notion of quasi polynomial degrees, this is the case of what I was mentioning. So, and the um, very comedic characteristic group to impose a particular uh, spectral abscissa, which is nothing else than uh, the, say the maximum multiplicity of the practices with it that we can get, and uh, leaving the partial pole placement method over. So it's, it's, it's quite complicated to discuss about Kammer and Wittek during one or only one hour because there are a lot of other notions which are not necessary to be to be introduced. So I prefer only to give some ideas and to let's say to stay at some generic power level. So parameter delay and dynamics. What is the problem formulation? The preliminaries and the fundamental preliminary result is the continuity properties. Uh, the continuity of the roots with respect to characteristic roots with respect to the parameters and of course the property of the spectral axis of function. And some motivating things from the motivating things are coming from this particular, let's say, MID factor. 
property. So uh, one of the things that uh, it was um, interesting to get out is just to have also some algorithms in order to be able to generate exactly what you see in one second, how the routes are are, are moving uh, when uh, when the delay parameter is is changed. As you will see, is that uh, in general not necessary the route which is closer to the imaginary axis is driving faster to cross the imaginary axis. And in this particular case, we have a configuration in which uh, the routes are arriving, they are meeting on the imaginary axis, and after you will have one is continuing, uh, which corresponds to the so-called semi-simple case, and the other ones are just let's say splitting until you have the so-called non-regular splitting. So this, uh, the, 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 let's say, the, corresp uh, the corresponding analysis was uh, was done um, by uh, one of my former PhD student, who was uh, Alejandro, uh, who was um, Alejandro Martinez, uh, that uh, and uh, the PhD advisor uh, to me was also Fernando Mendez Barrios, and uh, who is from close to Daniel, uh, not necessarily office, but close to uh, located at Sanlipo property. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, let's, um, sorry. Let's go ahead and let's take a look parameters and uh, when we're talking parameters delay and dynamics, what is the, exactly the problem formulation? So we are considering that we have NP coming from parameters, so we have NP parameters, an open set in, uh, of course, uh, real uh, talking about real numbers and a set of parameters belonging to uh, there is a p missing p as a vector belonging to the open set. So we are defining the uh, complex value transfer uh, complex value function, which is more or less uh, we are just representing only in considering instead of writing it as a differential equation. And as you see here, the the will have and the delays and the delay vector will be also depending on the uh, parameter p. Parameter p. Uh, uh, why written in that way? Because we can leave also the possibility that the delay vector is dependent of the parameter. So we assume that the delay vector is sufficiently smooth, and the polynomials uh, are in a such way that p zero is manic, uh, because we need to avoid uh, the uh, situation on. Uh, saying when the degree of uh, P0 is uh, by a particular choice of, uh, let's say, of the dominant coefficient, yeah, the degree of, of uh, degree in the case of the delay is equal to zero is vanishing. So delay system, depending on parameters, there are a lot of examples and uh, biosciences, this is a classical one. Uh, the coefficients are depending on some delays and there is a picture on that. In control engineering is mainly when we use when we are using the delay as a the control parameter in the effect uh, the, the delay blocks. And this is one of the option. And the other option is when we're approximating the, the derivative action by using delay difference operator. And this is exactly what I mentioned already earlier. Now delay system depending on parameters, the idea is there are a lot of situations and if we have more than one delay, uh, the idea is perhaps to exploit the delay structure. In general, we have two configurations, rational independent, including uncommensurate, rational dependent, including uh, commensurate. So there are there, there, uh, various possibilities to work it out. Uh, I will not focus on, on it on, uh, in that direction, but it's interesting, at least in the case of commensurate, because we can get results uh, which are uh, like one delay or uh, multiple commensurate delays uh, more or less in terms of let's say results we are getting more or less the same so characteristic routes in, and i'm using the definition introduced by uh, bellman and cook in, uh, characteristic routes are nothing else than the zeros of the characteristic function the standard stability problem that we can mention define the whole set of parameters p belonging to the of the corresponding to open set, current, uh, guaranteeing that the spectrum of characteristic function is located in P, P minus. Now, <clears throat> what is the simplest uh, case is when we have parameters and uh, we have parameters arriving, uh, appearing in P0, P1, and we consider tau as being dependent parameter with respect to 
and this kind of approach was already used in the, in, in the literature and the first, uh, let's say, D decomposition method or tau decomposition method are using such kind of things. In the case of D decomposition method, standard D decomposition method, we, we, are, uh, we are just taking tau as a constant and we leave the parameters, um, we are the parameters free. And in tau decomposition methods, all the parameters in T0 and T1 are fixed and we leave the parameters. Of course, uh, uh, in the literature, both have been developed in the, the first one of the decomposition in the 60s and the other one starting with by the end of the 60s. So, in terms of properties, what is the most important uh, that we have a finite number of characteristic rules of, uh, let's say, of the perceived function in any vertical stack of the complex plane. First property and the other property, um, there exists a value in a such a way that all the characteristics located uh, uh, to the left with respect to value. In other words, the only accumulation point, because we have an infinite number of uh, only potential accumulation point for the characteristic roots is finite infinity and cannot be uh, uh, toward infinity. I'm talking about infinity as to respect to direction going in a C class to now continuity properties of course is the degree of T0 equal to T1 we have several configuration uh, in fact uh, in, in this particular case we are in a neutral uh, delay differential uh, case if the degree of T0 is larger than the degree of T1 we are in the so-called retarded case the neutral case the properties that you can see below are not necessarily true in fact we can construct situation in which all these properties are more or less uh, are not necessarily are, uh, not necessarily uh, true uh, in the sense I will explain a little bit later uh, exact meaning and one of the fundamental issue is the continuity with respect to the delay parameter when close to zero to some positive of that infinite decimal so for the continuity properties we have uh, the chalema that helps us last us a lot in the sense that we define in the board uh, and we have a um, characteristic root CCT equal to K, then we can find, uh, in, uh, we can have a sufficiently small uh, ball around this uh, root in a such a way that uh, we'll have exactly K zeros, multiplicity taken into account, we have an idea if the corresponding root will split K independent roots or in, uh, let's say, the uh, L uh, independent roots with L uh, smaller than K, and some of them have a multiplicity larger than one. So, continuity properties allows us, at least in the case of the retarded, uh, uh, retarded system, to go ahead with a very important, uh, let's say, uh, result concerning the spectral axis of function. Spectral axis of function is uh, really related to the stability of. Uh, the differential equations and in fact uh, give simply uh, the supremum of the real part of the characteristic roots in which here that the stability is simply rewrite by asking that minimum value is less than zero. So the properties there are uh, more or less uh, three. The first one is always exists. The second one is that uh, the spectral axis is finite, which is a direct consequence of the fact that there are no roots that go into infinity. And the function is continuous, and this is the most important property because the continuity is ensured also with respect to the parameter t, but also with respect to the delay parameter. So, uh, Dafko in uh, in the 70s, uh, and after he reworked this in the 80s, has given a very a very nice uh, a proof to this result by using this theorem. And we have time to take a look at the next one. Now. What is important as delay varies, the multiplicity summation of the characteristic roots in open C class, so that means stability, change only if a root appears on or crosses the imaginary axis. So uh, this is a fundamental, a fundamental thing. Why? Because the continuity, such kind of properties, continuity with respect to the imaginary axis. So there are no roots jumping from the left to the right or from jumping from the right to the left. If uh, we are changing from stability to instability we have to change through the imaginary axis and in other words imaginary axis appears as a clue point in our analysis so 
we need to take into account what's happening on national tax. However, I'm back to let's say uh, we are the, we do all the things in a proper way because we are working in infinite dimension. We have two particular mechanisms. Cases. One is chemical character of some protox schemes, and this is the case when P0 and P1, as you said earlier, have the same degree. The other is in the we are talking about the line implementation, properly posed, improperly posed scheme. On the, I, uh, I, will, uh, I will not uh, enter too much in, in this. Uh, both have been quite reported in the literature. Considering the new for character of some close loop scheme means that what is the, we need that the corresponding delay difference operator should be stable. In the case of uh, low implementation, uh, for instance, if we are you if we, if we are using a proportional derivative, uh, let's say scheme, proportional derivative controller, uh, we need that the degree of the polynomial zero should be larger than the degree of polynomial p one plus uh, one. In this particular case, we can can, uh, can uh, say that uh, the uh, any kind of uh, implementation of the, the derivative part of the control law will be more or less properly posed. So we need to take attention to the case. And now, <clears throat> first thing in the because the discussion is more or less with the delay as a, a control parameter. If we are staying, we are staying. Uh, uh, let's say with the configuration in which all the, the other parameters are fixed and is uh, in a, a free parameter. Q is assumed to be phonic in the sense that uh, the, the coefficient of the maximum lambda, the maximum P is equal to one. And um, <clears throat> we are in the retarded case that means P of Q is larger than the degree of P. At that moment, what we'll have, we'll have a result, a result, and just more or less changing the procedure developed by Cook and Van der Driesche, Pauline Van der Driesche in 86. And uh, the idea of uh, Kenneth and Pauline was quite simple, was, uh, as I mentioned, we have the continuity of the delay with respect to the imaginary axis. This result was more or less uh, uh, continuity, sorry, of the characteristic roots as a function of the delay with respect to the imaginary axis. So the idea was to uh, take a look first what's happening in the free delay case. Uh, so we have a finite dimensional system and we have the, we have, uh, have the uh, characteristic roots of the polynomial P lambda plus two lambda, lambda being of course the Laplace, uh, Laplace variable, S or P in other practical engineering. Next, taking a look at the behavior with respect to the imaginary axis detecting crossing roots or crossover frequencies, which is simply, we are just taking the modulus, why? Because you'll have P G omega plus Q G omega exponential minus G omega tau E is equal to zero. Or, uh, if you leave the parameter choice being free, uh, you will see that exponential minus G omega tau in absolute value, if we are taking the modulus, is equal to one. So simply detecting crossing by taking a look to a polynomial, because in omega square we have the polynomial p g omega equal q g omega in the in, in absolute values, it's uh, be a polynomial. So in this particular case, uh, the roots on the imaginary axis can be detected and will have always a final number of roots. As in the case of delays, we are still discussing about the final number of roots. This uh, on the imaginary axis will have a final number of roots. What will change is when we're talking about the crossing direction characterization. In, in the case of uh, simple roots, if the signal of the real part is positive, we are going towards instability. If the signal is negative, we are going towards uh, instability. Probably it's a little bit more complicated when uh, the roots are, are not simple, and this is essential when we need to have a full character of the stability regions with respect to the parameter. So as you see here, Case free of delay, final number of roots, final dimensional problem, final number of roots, or for the dimensional, final dimensional problem. Crossing root set, finite. And crossing direction in the simple inver in the simple roots, case will have invariant because once again, for each crossing will generate a sequence of delays, uh, sequence of delays. In fact, for each delay of the sequence, we'll have 
more or less that the crossing direction is always the same. And what is surprising, once again, is that if we are in the, in, let's say, in the simple root case, there are no double roots or triple roots, at that moment, by introducing the, the an auxiliary function, which is nothing else that of g omega square minus p or g omega square, the absolute values for q and the absolute values for p, we'll simply have that the signum, uh, in fact, the crossing direction is given uh, directly by uh, the, the signum of the auxiliary function evaluated at the crossing, at the crossing root. Omega c being the crossing root of crossover fragments are using uh, other similar or uh, analog words from the from the. Now there is a particular property that uh, in general is more or less forgotten is that uh, if the crossing root uh, crossing root set is empty at that moment empty I'm talking uh, intersection of the let's say of the uh, <clears throat> there are no roots on the imaginary axis which simply says that uh, uh, there are no roots uh, characteristics on the, on the imaginary axis in the set sigma s sigma n including all the characteristic roots of delta and uh, if we have a uh, empty crossing set at that moment, in the simplest case, there are two situations. And uh, surprisingly, the first one was uh, established by Sipkin in 47. The second one is Stan and Latchman, 95. And there are other results after, uh, by extending the, this in the commentary delay case and also in the non commentary delay case. This simply says that if uh, P of g omega, uh, the modulus of p of g omega, g omega is dominating the modulus of p of g omega for all omega in R plus. We can have two plus, two cases. So we have delay independent stability if the system of delay is stable, and we'll have delay independent instability if the system P of delay is unstable. And in the second case, we conserve the number of unstable roots all delay uh, value. So such a property is quite interesting. Why? Because this is exactly the origin of the frequency sweeping curve approach in which you are rewriting the property above. That means uh, evaluating it on the axis on the form Q of lambda plus P of lambda multiplied with Z. So we are writing it as a 2D problem. And the frequency sweeping curve is nothing else than 2 P omega over P G omega sine and minus. And we are just simply taking a look at the intersection of this curve with a line I1, which is parallel to the axis axis and coordinate equal. But of course, if we have multiple, uh, let's say, multiple delays, they can be multiple commensurate delays, but can be multiple non necessary commensurate delays, point by delay. At that moment, we can detect less, most of the, let's say, most, but not all, uh, multiple, uh, multiple characteristic groups. So we can, and surprisingly from the engineering point of view, is that we can detect the crossing direction directly from the plot. Why? Because if you take a look and take into account that Q, it's, the Q of Q is always larger than the Q of P, of Q is larger than the Q of P because uh, it's a retarded case, the analysis can be done also in the case. Let's leave the different occasion. At that moment, <clears throat> When omega goes to infinity, this goes to uh, this. The ratio between these two things goes to infinity. Why? Because uh, Q, the maximum power, will dominate uh, dominate the, the other. So in this way, uh, we'll have that uh, uh, the curve. If there is an intersection with respect to the imaginary axis, I'm talking about in terms of uh, characteristic roots as a function of delay value. This corresponds that we are going from and uh, in, in this particular case, if it's only one intersection, we are going from left to the right. This simply means that the curve, we are uh, we are going in the increasing sense of omega, and going in the increasing sense of omega, we are intersecting the line I1 uh, from uh, down, from, uh, let's say, from the values uh, smaller than one to values larger than one, from up, from down to up. So reformulating into invariance properties by using frequency sweeping curve allowed, uh, allowed to go ahead in this project. Now let's have a look at the scalar case and talk about a double zero singularity. This is quite easy because if you take a look, for instance, the delay equal to one and you take a parameter alpha, 
the characteristic function in this particular case can be simply written as being lambda plus alpha one minus exponential. Here it's uh, is not tau, it's lambda because uh, we'll sigma instead of uh, tau equal to one. Sorry for that. And uh, surprisingly, in this particular case, we can see that a lambda is equal to zero is a solution, why zero on the left and on the right is one minus one and zero. And we'll have a double of the origin if alpha is vertical minus one, why? Because if we are derivating lambda, at that moment we'll have one. After if you are derivating this one, will be minus alpha minus from the derivative or exponential minus lambda multiplied with one. And uh, evaluate it at zero, it will be one plus alpha equal to zero. We are, uh, we are in the case where you have a double root at your origin. So we are in the scalar case and we have a double root at the origin. And this is nothing else than the degree of the quasi polynomial. We have the degree one for this part, zero for the other part, so one plus zero, still equal to zero for this part, so it will be one. So uh, two plus one or coming from the second delay because they've been equal to three minus one it's equal to so in this particular case i have i think that i have a graphic showing this what's happening is that we'll have always the root invariant and the origin and uh, what's happening is that uh, we can see quite easy that if we leave we are increasing the parameter alpha at a given moment we are arriving at the origin which is exactly this situation and after we'll continue to the left and when we arrive at the origin this is of course a double root at the origin this root is always dominating all the others all the roots are located to the left in this particular case only one root would continuing on the on the real axis is going from the positive value to the negative value the other one staying at origin okay so we'll have a very simple situation in which we can show that we have a dominating root at the origin and this is more or less the, uh, the multiplicity uh, using the dominant in this particular okay so now consider another uh, equation which is the inverted pendulum and we'll have a triple zero singularity i will try to go a bit faster with respect to that in order just to show what's happening we'll have no friction uh, we can we can have also in terms of control two delay blocks, but uh, one of them is only recovering more or less the uh, theta dot because uh, take a look here what is missing in order to have in the linearized case uh, to have a pure Lipsch polynomial is that we do not have information on theta dot. So one of them is more or less giving the information on theta dot, and the other one is correcting. Uh, the fact that here we are uh, with a positive value on uh, saying with a negative value for for this so by rescaling and introducing everything you arrive to this kind of let's say uh, quasi polynomial in which we assume that uh, we have tau equal to one in fact uh, what is not uh, just choosing the tau in alpha you are getting the information that you see here uh, in this particular case i'm sorry i'm just coming back we are just getting a double root at the origin, and in fact, uh, the quasi polynomial that you see here has uh, the, the degree equal to three. This is exactly what you can see here. We'll have more or less the same situation, sorry, we have more or less the same situation as earlier, but this time with a double root at the origin instead of having only one single root at the origin, and the other root coming from, uh, in this sense, I'm just representing in the, in, in the opposite direction just to show what's happening. So when you arrive here, this one will be dominant, and after the double root will stay here, and another root will be going to positive real axis, and this one will be all dominant. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead with next uh, important remark. Uh, sorry, so if we go back to the first example that was presented, let's say the, the choice of uh, this example was borrowed for some was constructed by some colleagues in 2012. In fact, uh, we have used it for just to show exactly what's happening. And what you see here is that in this particular case, which more or less corresponds to the semi-simple case, we have uh, the continuity also in terms of derivative. And in this particular case, we have this continuity in terms of derivative and 
terms of lambda 2 and lambda 3, right? Because if you are deriving this term, this term will appear 1 over square root of the this quantity. So that's uh, the quantity is this dimension, and this one I think shows what it was, uh, what it was uh, trained earlier. In this particular case, we do not have the, uh, a, the multiplicity induced by the uh, by dominancy. Why? Because in this particular case, the degree of the quasi polynomial is degree of quasi polynomial is larger than. Uh, so uh, there are situations in which uh, may appear that for smaller degrees and degrees of quasi polynomial have uh, dominancy, which is induced by the multiplicity. But it is not necessarily uh, general. In general, it's uh, true if it if it holds for the let's say for the <coughs> for the multiplicity equal with the degree of the there are still have results on the so-called overorder multiplicity which is larger than the degree of the polynomial the polynomial. At that moment you can go ahead with uh, so we. we Still go ahead with that. Now, still delay of the control parameter uh, will fix a few ideas, and after I will try to end this. So, it's important is perhaps not to uh, go too too much on the on the on detail too much of this fluid model, but just simply saying that uh, some particular fluid models uh, in networking, we may arrive. This model was uh, proposed by by Ismailov in. Uh, more than 20 years ago, uh, more than 25 years ago. And the idea is that if you take a look to this one, what we have, we have more or less a second order, uh, let's say if tau is equal to R at zero, we'll have an oscillator system plus a delay block here. And uh, the idea is that uh, one of the interesting properties that this control time interval, which is R here, may stabilize uh, in the case tau equal to zero. Of course, uh, we out more or less uh, networks in general, the round trip time, which is tau one plus tau two is never equal to zero. Uh, it corresponds at least to the propagation of the signal. And what it was interesting, uh, it was interesting that another uh, another configuration was proposed by Ismailo by saying, in fact, that instead of using only R, we are using two control time intervals. One is R and the other one is R over two. The idea, at least uh, if we try to interpret this properly, the idea of Ismailov is if we are reducing more and more the control time interval at that moment, there are more chances that uh, the fluid model is working is working better because for him, as for Hazen in uh, 1934, and also some of the guys after, the, the real problem was that uh, uh, huge delay as a control time interval or value uh, may generate problems. In this particular case, what we are what we are arriving, we are arriving here at I double dot uh, A I C minus tau plus C C minus tau minus R C I C minus tau minus R over two. For I is a particular, let's say you target value and they are just taking this. So we still have a second order system and if we see here it's one block, a second block and this is the third block here we have one delay block, two block with a double interval. So based on this, uh, it was interesting to take a look exactly if this third block is really necessary or not, or these blocks are necessary. So in other words, how many delay blocks are needed in order to control more or less uh, double integrate. So. Uh, this is more or less what you see here, the chain of double integrators, and if they are controlled two of, uh, or three delay blocks. And the problem with that uh, it was, uh, I think, uh, more than 20 years ago in the literature was uh, exactly what I was saying, how many delay blocks are necessary uh, and perhaps sufficient to find the necessary in terms of delay blocks to, uh, to control the chain of integrators. So, uh, <clears throat> We can say that there are just a sequence of stability and instability region in the, in the particular case if we consider that uh, tau equal to zero are different from zero. And uh, the conclusion of the, of the study was more or less that the reducing control time interval is not a good solution for improving 
is a fast frame. This is exactly represented here. So the Ismailov idea was just to go or to the left on the control time interval, so zero. And as you see here, if we approach zero at that moment, the stability is guaranteed inside of this region. So the round trip time becomes smaller and smaller. So if you reduce more or less control time interval, you have to reduce the round trip time in order to see the stability of the correction. Here, the positive or negative value means that we are increasing, we are transmitting more data, and we are, de we are decreasing in transmitting this. So, uh, the, the, let's say the fundamental idea in terms of strategy here is more or less that eight and X strategy perhaps is more adapted in this particular case. So, the idea is just wait for a little bit longer before sending the message. This will allow more fluidity in terms of traffic from one point of view. And from the other point of view, this guarantees larger round trip time for which the stability is uh, is uh, guaranteed and is necessary to interfere and to change the algorithm if the control time interval is is. So this shows that uh, the weight and back strategy. This is a word that it was used by uh, Gabor Stepan and uh, his of his former student Tamas Insperger, but in a different context. But this is more or less uh, the idea. In some cases, it is better to wait and to act later in order to ensure more quality, more more property in the system. So now what we can formulate this as you see here, the equation 16 and the equation 17. And uh, we'll have more or less the problem, which is finding conditions on the R, R plus one tuple, which is defined by R K I tau I, which is exactly the, the delay blocks. And uh, in a such a way that the control stabilizes the sort of system stable is really is it. The chain of integrator have two ideas. One of them is to fix the delays and the other one to find the gains. The other idea, the other uh, idea is just to fix the gain to compute the delay. So in, in each particular case, in, in the second case, we are using the delay as a control parameter. In the first case, it corresponds to uh, as being natural in, in congestion control. So I will stay on this. I will just show two more things because time is running. Uh, so we are defining the, the following van der Von matrix by taking into account tau 1, tau 2, and so on, which are independent of each other. Uh, in this way, this matrix is invertible if the delay are distinct. And what we are doing, what we are doing is uh, we are just constructing the Hurwitz polynomial and we are taking the delay values and based on the coefficients of the Hurwitz polynomial, polynomial 0, Q1, Q2, Qn minus 1, and then we are taking the uh, Vanderman matrix power minus 1. We are just inverting the matrix, the Vanderman matrix. We are just defining a control law which takes into account cross trajectory of the system at the values tau 1, tau 2, and so on, tau n. And this achieves the asymptotic stability for small values, as, in other words, as epsilon goes to 0 plus and my and uh, rightmost root converge to epsilon lambda i which uh, lambda i are nothing else than the zero of q lambda so what is the idea here is that for instance if we take instead that uh, lambda i are distinct each other we are assuming that all lambda i are identical at that moment part what we are doing we are doing else that the idea that i mentioned earlier that means we are imposing some particular property in the sense that we are inducing or less uh, multiplicity that um, the multiple a uh, corresponding multiple factors you dominant with respect to the other and in the uh, in the other case we are if we, uh, which is uh, if we are defining the the, the same uh, the other option is just to take into account another type of Low, and we are just achieving the asymptotic stability for small values of the epsilon, which is the exact replacement on the low design. So the result that we can get is that the chain of integ integrators can be stabilized by a chain including n delay blocks, and furthermore, the conditions is also necessary. The uh, sufficiency by construction in the necess necessity is obtained by using the property that. Under appropriate assumption, the stability of a quasic polynomial implies the stability of its derivative. So we are stopping here. We saw that it has taken longer. So please uh, go ahead, and I'm trying to answer to questions that you may have. Thank you so much, Silvio.
so really interesting talk. Uh, we have some time for questions. I don't know if the people in the auditorium is, is possible to. It was a little bit speed, I agree with, unfortunately, but I try to manage in a such a way that we are staying in, in around one yeah. hour. Yeah, one hour, yeah, I understand you. So. I'm glad that if everything was extremely clear, this is good for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I'm really sorry for going so fast and not entering into detail. So because it's uh, the idea was just to cover more things in, in, in a very short period of time. Yeah, 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 I understand. Uh, just just uh, this is really uh, for me. It's, it's the, the topic is familiar, you know. And uh, just a, a little uh, some question. Maybe you can give some information uh, for the students. Um, as you mentioned, um, we have situation where the, the parameters uh, depends on the delay. Yes, and maybe the, the other situation you mentioned is when the delay depends on the parameters of the system. Okay, and it, it seems that there are situations that maybe you can mention some examples this direction for the student mainly for interesting the student. No? And, and what are the, the maybe singularities? If the delay is equal to zero or, or not? Or, can you mention something about this, Silvio? Yeah. So if so, if I understood well, is the way the delay and the parameters uh, are are generating singularities? Am I right? So in right. Fact, yeah. why going in that direction? Because in general, you know, let's uh, when you have I, immune immune dynamics, uh, talking about biology in general. So the real problem is that in immune dynamics, you really need to, you have some parameters that you can measure and you have other parameters that you cannot measure. So the idea is that with respect with the parameters that you cannot measure, what you can expect by taking okay. into account the measurement for the first set of parameters. In this particular case, the idea is more or less to, to create a kind of, uh, sorry, to create a kind of, let's say, black box uh, that may cover the parameters that you cannot measure, but for which you can have an input-output relationship. At that moment, in terms of input-output relationship, you are just trying to represent a kind of generic behavior, by saying we are trying just to exploit this, and after you are changing parameters that you can measure to see yeah. exactly if you can expect a particular type of behavior. And in general, the type of behavior, behavior which is expected is the positivity. This is the first important point. The positivity and the other important point is if positivity is related to some oscillatory still positive but some oscillatory uh, behavior in the sense that if it's oscillatory at that moment you can expect that it's in some sense bounded now if it's not oscillatory what kind of are you are you arriving to a steady state which is strictly positive or a steady state which is strictly uh, which is goes to zero why because in general in this kind of system you have more or less three type of equilibria. One equilibria in which all the population are dying, which is not good. Yeah. One equilibria, I'm talking about immune dynamics, in which the, the main population is dying and the, the, let's say the, the bad population is surviving. And the third one, which is the one of interest in which you have a, uh, both population are surviving, but with a very small, let's say, population level for the, let's say, for the virus or what else in a such a way that if the level of for this population is quite slow, we can say that more or less the situation is in some sense under control. So for these kind of systems, you need to take into account how the parameters may affect. Now, multiplicity in this particular case is a little bit more complicated. Why? Because the multiplicity does not reflect the reality. It's only yeah. a particular way to rewrite some parameters which guarantees something. But if you are talking about multiple induced dominancy, at least you can say, I'm concentrating on this particular set of parameters, and I know that for this particular set of parameters, if all the others are not important, I know that I'm dominating. So this is in, in towards the, the, the idea. Okay. Okay, thank you, thank you, Silvio. Uh, okay, so real pleasure to be with you. 
I know that there is a break, and I know that coffee is always important at 10:30 yeah, yeah, yeah. in the morning. In fact, 10:40. <laughs> and I hope okay. that you'll uh, you'll have a nice a nice uh, a nice yeah. meeting. So please enjoy the other talks. See you. Thank you, Silvio. See bye you. Bye bye. bye, -bye.